What you see behind you is a little image here. This is a, a zebra-striped unicorn, um, along with uh, the fairy here uh, meeting um, over in a, looks like a little forest meadow. Um, this is an image that I created about three years ago uh, on this Pixlr program, and I'm going to show you how to make this again today um, with the new version of Pixlr that they recently released. Pixlr is a lot like Photoshop. It allows you to edit images inside of a Chromebook, a PC, or a Mac. Um, it doesn't work great on phones for the app side of things that we're going to use today, but on those Chromebooks, um, it's going to work wonderful. Um, so this particular image here, um, we'll see if we can get a little bit going on that. Let me close out my YouTube channel there. And for this, um, we are going to search up Pixlr. You'll see it's here in my favorites as well. But we are going to be looking for P-I-X-L-R. So P-I-X-L-R. I'm just going to hit enter into Google. And it'll bring up Pixlr.com photo editor online. And this allows us to see a few different things. They have a Pixlr E, a Pixlr X, Pixlr Editor. We can just click on the main website. They have um, a login if you really want to log in. You certainly can. They have things that you can purchase from them. They have the uh, Pixlr X, um, which is a real simpler, uh, real simple editor um, for those of you who are novices at this. Or Pixlr E, if you would like to dive into some of the more advanced stuff with me today, this is what we're going to work on today is Pixlr E. Also, another one right down here, a little uh, hyperlink to the Pixlr E app. This app keeps track of your history. If you have anything it, you've worked on before, it'll show up here in your history. And um, just so you know today, I'm working on a Chromebook and it's just like any student Chromebook we have here in the district. So um, nothing fancy that I'm working on. I should add, I am using a mouse to help me out because I'm not so good with trackpads, but everything we're gonna do today, you can do on a trackpad as well. All right, we're gonna go over here to create new and um, though I should mention, they do have a stock search as well. You, they have like a whole bunch of stock images that you can look up. Um, in the Create New, um, you're, there's a few different options here. The, the ones that you can use right off the bat that are really easy is Web Small, Web 720p, and Full HD, which is 1920 by 1080p. Um, it goes all the way up to Ultra HD. Uh, you can get up to um, near 4K kind of um, specs here. Um, so we have uh, the Web 720. This is the one we're going to work with today is Web 720. Go ahead and click on this one. And when you do that, you can then come over here and give it a name. Um, I'm going to call this one, um, let's see, I'll call it, uh, let's go Zebra Corn, just for kicks and giggles. And then the width and height, that's specified by it being a small picture. And I'll go ahead and hit Create. Though you should know there is a background button. I am not going to use that for this. I want my background to be transparent. Think of instead of working on a piece of paper, we're going to be working on a table of glass. So I'm going to hit Create here. And here's our glass table. That's what that black and um, gray checkered background means, is that it's transparent. All right. Let's go ahead and start pulling in images. In order to create that scene again, um, I queued up a few Google searches here. The first one is a country meadow search. I looked up country meadow, and then right here at the very beginning, I saw this beautiful picture, and I absolutely fell in love with it. It's a wonderful composition. You have the sunlight um, uh, kind of dappled through the trees here. You got this wonderful tree over here with some shadows under it and a nice open space where we can put our object. I'm going to go ahead and grab this one. You can grab any background you like um, for this, though. Um, and then I'm going to right click it. You notice how over here we have, this is called a thumbnail. This is a very small image. When I clicked on it, it gives you a preview of, of what the image actually looks like. And down here in the corner, it says 1920 by 900. So this is actually a really large image, um, but we'll be able to paste it in. There's a few things you can do. You can save image as, and it'll save it to your downloads of your Chromebook or to the download folder of your PC or Mac. Um, and when you do that, it'll tell you how large the file is as well. This file happens to be large. Um, but instead, I'm gonna do something even easier. I'm just gonna go copy image. I click on copy image. And then I'm going to come back over here to Pixlr. And I can go up to Edit, and I can go Paste, or you see Control-V will do the trick as well. We'll give it just a moment. It'll paste in, and there we go. We have our image. You can use two fingers to scroll up and down on your trackpad to zoom in and out, or I'm using the roll bar on my mouse, or you also have a slider over here where you can zoom in and out. All right, this image is now in place.
um, we're ready to pull in our first object. So the first thing I'm gonna pull in is a horse. So I looked for a white horse. I found a real nice one here, um, but I wanna show you something about this. This particular horse, uh, there's a second horse that looks just like it over here. Do you see how this horse has that checkered background? Well, one thing I added to my search was I said white horse PNG. PNG files are um, a special type of file that can have a transparent background where it's almost like a cookie cutter or a stamp or a sticker um, instead of a solid square or rectangular object. You'll see this one has a solid white background versus this one has that um, uh, little uh, triangle background. But now there's something weird about this. And this is something you're gonna run into all the time when you do Google searches for PNGs. Because I can see the PNG background, that checker background in the preview, in the little thumbnail, I'm sorry, in the, in the thumbnail down here, that actually means that is not, um, in this case, a, uh, a, a PNG. It's, you see the little squares up here? They're kind of faded in and out. Somebody actually took a PNG with that checkered background and then took a picture of it. And they then imported that in to uh, the internet. So they kind of messed this picture up. We would have to go through and delete all those little boxes around it in order to make it a cookie cutter. This one again, when I click on it, it should show up with little um, checkered boxes on this preview image, even though I don't see them here. So this one, while it is a PNG, it's a PNG with a solid white background. I have a way to fix this though. Let's right click this image and we're gonna search Google for this image. And when we do that, it gives us a couple options. We can see all sizes or the small or the medium. Well, in this case, we wanted to go for about medium size images anyway. So I'm gonna click medium here and look at all of these horses that are the same. These are all just replicas of that picture, but in slightly different websites and things. Let me click on one. Ah, and now you see what happened? That preview has that checkered background, even though the original had a solid white background. And that right there, my friends, is a transparent PNG. Let's copy this image. I'm gonna right click it and then copy image. And I'll come back over here to Pixlr and I'm gonna paste that in. And I'm gonna use Control V or you can go up to edit and go paste either way. And you see it has a box here. Now this horse, it's the lighting is a little different. So we're gonna to have to tweak the lighting on the horse, but I'm gonna scale this horse down just a little bit. And when I click the corner, I can make it a little smaller in size. Let's see, I'm gonna go mm, maybe about this size and I'm gonna move it over here in the grass. I can click on the middle and move it in the grass. Also, if I held down shift, you'll see up here I have fixed aspect. If I hold down shift on the keyboard, it goes to free aspect. And what that does is it allows me to warp the image and that we do not want to do. Um, that's not a, a great tactic. Um, I go ahead and let go of that and it switches back to that fixed aspect ratio. Um, so that's what we'll look for right there. So we'll have that horse. We're gonna put it right there in that little halo of sun maybe. Um, that might be a nice spot for it. All right, I'm gonna click off of that. Now, what if we wanted to do something crazy with this horse? Um, let's see if we can convert it into a unicorn and also, I have a crazy idea. I want to turn this into a zebra striped unicorn. I'm going to show you how to transfer the stripes from the zebra onto this horse. So in order to do that, I'm going to look up a zebra PNG. So I got zebra PNG here. I found one that I really like. This is another one with that transparent background. It took me a little bit of searching around. A lot of the zebras didn't look as good as I wanted, but I really like this zebra. And one thing that I like about it too is that it is very similar to the horse. Let me show you that white horse again. You see how it's about the same shape as that horse? And it's that same angle that the picture is taken at. It's that profile shot of the horse. Same thing here, profile shot of the zebra. So I'm gonna right click that zebra, copy that image, come back over to our uh, Pixlr. Whoops, pardon me, there we go. And I'm gonna paste it in. Here we are. So we got a zebra. It looks like a little higher definition image than the horse. Now, something I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move that zebra directly on top of the horse, and I'm gonna see if I can size that zebra to about the same size. I'm gonna put it on top of that horse, and like, okay, we got a pretty close match. So the horse's head is a little more angled, so I'll have to do a little bit with that. Um, the back of the zebra is a little higher up. And while I'm doing this, um, we can actually change, um, 
a little more about this zebra as well, we can actually warp it. So I'm gonna go ahead and come up here to edit. I still have my zebra selected. I'm gonna go up to edit. I'm gonna go to something called free distort. And with free distort, it allows me to take parts of the zebra and warp them so that I can get that zebra just a little more aligned with the shape of the horse. I can really get it dialed in. Okay, now the feet I might have to work with a little bit to get those a little better. And you see the snout? I'll show you some tricks for that later on. Uh, look at that, there we go, a little better. But you see, then it throws the body up. I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and copy the body over first, and then I'm gonna worry about the head since the head is a little different shape. Okay, with that said, I'm gonna move this zebra over here to the side now so that they're not overlapping. And then I'm gonna come over here and check this little box. And um, Oh, I have to confirm first that I wanna uh, apply the distort, and yes, I do. I'm gonna give it just a little moment that Chromebook's thinking. And then I'm gonna come over here and check this little box on the side here to make that zebra invisible. Or I'm sorry, not the zebra, but the background. And now I have both of them that I can work with. Okay. Um, I'm gonna separate this horse over a little bit. I'm, I might have to reposition him just so I have some space between the two. And now I'm gonna do something really interesting. You see the zebra? If I brought this horse over here, you can see the horses behind it, but I can click on this layer over here and drag, this is the layer of the zebra, and I could, or the horse, and I can layer it on top of the zebra. So maybe what I could do is I could go in here and rename my layers if I needed to. I'm gonna name this one horse. And then I'll come over here and label this one zebra. That way I don't get them mixed up. Whoop, zebra, zebra, there we go. And those two, if I flip flop them, you can see you can move them in front of each other. For right now though, I'm actually gonna move them onto the same layer. I can actually merge them down. So I can click on the horse layer that's on top of the zebra and I go up to layers and I am going to merge down. It's also control six. Now, the reason why I didn't select merge visible is because it would have merged everything that was showing, including the background image that's not showing. So it would have like gotten rid of the background. We don't want that. Same thing, we could have um, gone to layer and flatten the image. That would take um, all the layers and squish them all together. All right, for this one here though, we don't wanna lay, uh, squish layers together unless we have to, not until the very end. Keep them separated. Uh, the next tool I'm gonna show you is a wonderful one. It's called a clone tool. I'm gonna click on this clone tool and what it allows me to do, and I think S is the shortcut for it as well. And I am gonna click on this horse slash zebra layer now. And I'm gonna click right smack dab here in the middle of the zebra. You can see it makes a little circle. And then I come over to the horse and I can click and drag. And you see it's transferring the zebra on top of the horse. In fact, it does it so much so that I could actually really mess this image up by transferring the zebra all the way on. And that's not really what we want. We just want the, the, the texture of the zebra. So to undo something, I can go Control Z or I go up here to edit, undo if I make a mistake. That's really important. If you make a mistake anywhere along the way here, don't forget you can use Control Z or edit, undo. You can do it multiple times. In fact, down here, it even tells your history so you can see what you did last. And so let's try this clone one more time, but this time we're gonna adjust what's called the opacity. The opacity is how opaque or how see-through our stamp is gonna be. I'm gonna drop it down to about 50%. And I'll try it one more time with that clone stamp tool. We already selected the zebra, though if we wanted to change the source, we can come out here and click source and choose a different spot on the zebra or there's a hot key for that. You can hold down shift and then click on the source that you want. And now as I apply to the horse, I can keep the texture of the horse underneath, but there's a bit of a problem. You see up here, I can pull that zebra over the top of the horse. So while the texturing layering looks better, unfortunately I'm getting out of the parameters of a horse. Well, there's a solution for that. So again, I'm gonna go control Z and undo or go up here to edit and go undo. And then instead of um, getting started right away, I'm gonna go ahead and select just the horse. Well, how do we select just the horse? If we create a box around it, this is one way we could select it. The problem though is I could still um, get outside of the parameters of the horse's body. 
Um, I could try and lasso the horse. By the way, I can go control D to get rid of this selection here. But I could try and lasso the horse, but even then it'd be pretty hard. Even if I zoomed in all the way, the lasso tool, I would still have a hard time getting all the way around the horse and making it perfect. So I'm not gonna use that either. The other option that we have is called a wand select. Um, we have our magic wand here, and I'm gonna click on the horse. And you'll see it's selected everything to, that was near it that's a light color, but it didn't get the whole horse. So I'm gonna change up here the tolerance. I'm gonna change it, it was about around 30 probably for yours, maybe 32. I'm gonna crank the tolerance up to around 100 and voila, there you go, we got our whole horse. Now, when we go to use our clone stamp tool, I'm gonna to hold down shift and, or I'd, let's say I, when I first select it, I don't have to hold down shift, I can just select where I want. And now I can apply that same thing. Whoops, I forgot my opacity. I'll go back one step and I'll change that opacity back down to around 50, maybe even a little lower. I'm gonna try about 40%. That way we get a little more of the horse's texture. Here we go, let's see what we get. We'll keep on, I'm just clicking and dragging. And we're getting that zebra texture onto the horse. You'll see that upper, upper four, I don't know what you call it, a thigh or something like that. I'm not good with my horse anatomy. Sorry to all those out there who are horse aficionados, equestri equestrians, I guess is what you call it. Now, one thing that I did that I made a little bit of a mistake on is that I was clicking and dragging with one continuous brush. A lot of times when you're doing this type of work, you wanna do smaller clicks. But in the case of the clone stamp, it causes some problems because watch what happens if I click again up here. I'm now selecting and I'll go ahead and let, let me show you my actual um, body here because I'm gonna point out a few things with my finger. So up here, you'll see the target for the zebra. And over here, you're gonna see uh, where I'm cloning. Well, I don't want to clone the middle of the zebra's body up here. That's not good. So instead, I'm gonna undo that and I can go ahead and hide myself again here so I'm out of the way. I'm gonna go Control Z again, undo that one. I'm gonna retarget the zebra up here um, in, in this portion up here by holding down Shift, clicking, and then seeing if I can get that pattern going again. Here we go. Now you'll see one thing that happens if I start layering over, it starts darkening the pattern. So I wanna be careful about that. That's not a good look there. So I'm gonna go Control Z, undo. Um, let me retarget here. We'll get those patterns up here. We'll get it all the way up into the main up around the ears. I'm not gonna really do the ears too much. Now I'm gonna target the face. Now the zebra's face is a little bit different than the horse's. So one thing I can do, and same thing with the leg here, you see how this foreleg is a little bit further positioned along than the horse's? I'm gonna rotate um, the zebra um, is one thing that I could do. So if I took um, this zebra head here and I just selected it, I can go edit, free transform, and then I could come up here, not to the corner, but to right next to the corner, I can do a little rotation so that I can make the head of that zebra the same angle as the horse. And now when I come back here, I'm gonna select my horse again. I'm gonna apply that transformation, select my horse, and use the clone stamp. I'm gonna press S for that to do that. I'm gonna grab the zebra's face Target it right there in the middle of the jaw. Oops, and I forgot to reduce my um, opacity. I was down at 40%. Here we go. Now we can get the face of that horse with the zebra. Okay. Next, let's go ahead and do the legs. Now, I made a little bit of a, something of a goof because you see what happened to the zebra? I accidentally chopped part of the leg off and that's gonna be hard to undo. So something I can do if I make a major mistake like that is I can 
go back into uh, my original image. And this is the advantage if you download an image. Um, you always have that image. But in this case, I left my search tab open. So I'm just going to copy this image over again and come back over to my Pixlr. And I'm going to paste in a new zebra. And I'm going to rotate in this zebra uh, so that it's going to match that foreleg of that horse. So I need to resize it again just a little bit. So there's nothing wrong with having to, to redo something a little bit. So I got it pretty close to the same size of that horse. And then I'm going to click on that zebra again. I'm going to free transform it, rotate it, so that that foreleg is angled just about the same. Maybe I make this just a little bit larger, too. OK, there we go. I'll put this uh, zebra over here. And I'm going to lower that layer after I confirm the transformation. So it would have been better if I had done the leg originally, right? But that's okay to make a mistake as you go along. There's always a way to uh, create a solution for mistakes when you're working with technology. So I'm going to merge this, this zebra down so we can get the legs. So again, I'm going to use that magic wand, select my horse. I'm going to press S, change the opacity back down to 40%. Select that zebra leg and then apply that to the horse. And you'll see there, I just, if I zoom in, I didn't quite get enough of the zebra's leg right there. It wasn't perfectly aligned. That's OK. I come back in. I'm going to retarget. I'm going to add just a little bit more of that, that zebra in. Looks a little bit funny. That's OK. It's not perfect. And then same thing for this back leg here. We could do all that type of stuff to the, to the hind legs here. But in the interest of time, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to get those hind haunches. Add those in for the horse. Let's get that lower leg. OK. Now, if I go Control D, it goes Deselect All. And I can zoom back out, and I can get rid of my zebras now. A great way to get rid of a big chunk of stuff, I'm going to use my lasso tool. I'm going to select those zebras, and I'm going to hit backspace and delete them. And then I go Control-D to deselect. That um, I just want to remind you that lasso tool is over here. Shortcut is L. Now we have that horse, and we can put it into this background layer. We have a zebra horse now. All right, let's go ahead and add a unicorn horn to it. So I'm going to look up a narwhal horn. Because one of the things that's fun about zebras, or I'm sorry, about uh, unicorns, is that unicorns, part of their myth, oh, here's a nice one, part of their myth is that uh, the narwhal horns would wash up onto the beaches, and people in uh, northern Europe thought that they belonged to these magical creatures called unicorns. So we're going to steal this image here. I'm going to copy it. I like that one. That's a good PNG. So I'm going to copy image. Now there's a little bit of a problem. This one's facing the wrong way. So as I go into Pixlr and I paste it, oh my goodness, that's a big horn. So we need to flip it around, though. So I'm going to select, make sure that layer is selected. And we'll call this, we'll rename it. We'll call this one um, horn. So as we have that horn selected as a layer, I come up here to edit. And I'm going to transform this horn by flipping it horizontal. And it changes the direction of it. Now, make sure not to mix that up. I went to edit, transform, flip horizontal. Watch out, because there is an image, image rotation, flip horizontal. But that flips the entire image. <gasps> Look at that. We still have a little bit of our unicorn uh, hanging out in there. So I'm going to go back to our horse here. And I'm going to delete that uh, unicorn head off. OK. Control-D, deselect. And then I'm going to flip that, that image back. So image rotation, flip horizontal. OK. I'm going to pull my horse over here, my zebra horse. I'm going to click on my horn now. I'm going to size it down. 
and we'll add that. I'm not, I'm not an aficionado on these things, so I'm not sure where this horn is supposed to be in terms of like, I, I'm guessing maybe, maybe up here, somewhere there. And it looks a little big to me, and so I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit more. There we go. Now, uh, I can zoom in a little better, see where we want it. Maybe, maybe it needs to be a little closer to here. Okay. And I can put that horn behind the horse layer as well. And we got a little bit of that hair on top of it. Now, I bet I could probably fiddle with this and make it look a little more perfect. Maybe, maybe right there. That's really up to you how much time you want to spend with that. Now, remember that horn is a separate layer from the horse. So once I have it exactly where I know I want it to be, I can click on the layer above the horn and I'm going to go layer and I'm going to merge down. There we go. And now we have one unified unicorn right there in the image. All right. And now I can kind of put that, that uh, I guess, a zebra corn. Is that what we're calling it? Uh, right over here. All right. The next thing that we can do, let's add in a little fairy that's uh, meeting this uh, zebra corn here in the forest. So I'm going to search up a fairy PNG here. And okay, we get some nice images. Uh, there's a pretty realistic one. Uh, I like the colors of this one. I think that'll match the colors in this image a little better if we have uh, one this way. So that one should work pretty good. Anytime you click on an image, you get a few other options down here below as well. Oh, look at this one though. Um, I'm going to click on this fairy. I like this one. This one's nice. Okay. So for this fairy here, I'm going to copy it in, even though it's not a PNG. And I'm going to put it in right there. I'm going to zoom in on this fairy now. Now we have a problem. It's got all that white background. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use my magic wand tool again. I'm going to drop my tolerance down because if I click on this, it's just basically going to select almost the whole image and we don't want that. So I'm going to drop the tolerance down to, oh, let's say about um, 30 or so. I'm going to go control D to deselect that. Whoops. I added a bookmark on accident because I wasn't clicked on Pixlr. I was on Chrome instead. Let me click on Pixlr. I'm going to go control D. And now when I click on it, ah, you see that? Now it's selecting everything except for the fairy. This can be very tricky though if you have a white image. If I tried doing this with a white horse, that would have not worked so well. I'm just gonna hit delete and voila, there we go. We have that um, white background. Now I'm gonna go control D and I can zoom this back out. And I'm gonna move this fairy over. Let's see, let's have her looking up at the, at the zebra corn. It seems awful big for a fairy. So um, I'm gonna shrink it up just a little bit. Um, there we go. Maybe like she's almost about to go kiss it on the nose or something like that. I don't know. It's look, she's looking up at it. I've got them both in that little halo bubble of sunlight. I like that a lot. So I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to click off of that. Now, the one thing that I don't like is this zebra corn. It seems awful pasty to me. It looks very like it's almost made out of chalk a bit too much. So I'm going to click back on this image and I'm going to warm it up a little bit. I'm going to come up here to adjustments and I'm going to hit auto adjust. Let's see what that does. Hmm, not much there. Sometimes that'll warm it up if the computer thinks it needs to be warmed up. But what if I go temperature and tint? Let's see what we can do with temperature and tint. What happens if I turn the temperature of this up? Ah, there we go. That's warming that image up. There we go. Looking pretty good. We'll hit apply. Click off. Hey, things are looking pretty good so far. I like this. Um, down here in the lower left, we didn't have quite enough time to get to shadows, but I'm going to show you one more thing down here. Um, you see the, the feet of the zebra corn? Let's put a little more um, grass in front of it. So I'm going to take that zebra corn and I'm going to, at this point, I'm going to layer all these together. I'm going to flatten my image. So Let's see, whoops, I just moved things around a little bit. So I'm going to go layer. At this point, I'm going to merge visible. So everything that's there is going to squish together. And now I'm going to look down at the feet. And I can move my little box up here in the upper right-hand corner. That will uh, move things around. And I'm going to put a little bit more grass in front of the zebra corn here. Um, so I'm going to use, again, that um, clone stamp tool. Um, and I'm going to keep 
this on this, this kind of fuzzy uh, edged brush. I'm gonna drop my opacity a little bit. And I'm gonna select some of this, um, some of these grasses and weeds and things like that. And let's go ahead and clone stamp those on to the feet. Let's see, I'm gonna grab a little more from over here. I'll get some darker green here. That foot's kind of raised out of the grass, so I don't need to worry about that one. I'm gonna do these ones just a little bit. We'll give it a little bit of that yellow foliage. There we go. Kind of, kind of masking them up just a little bit. All right, I'm pretty happy with that right now. Um, so if this is something you enjoyed, uh, go ahead and check this out. Check out pixlr.com, P-I-X-L-R.com. And this is the e-editor and you too can go in and create your own digital arts. What kind of animals can you imagine? Could you mash animals up? Could you uh, move the, I don't know, maybe uh, the wings of an eagle and add it to, I don't know, a ferret and have a flying ferret, right? Um, add a tiger tail to it. I don't know, it's really your imagination. Uh, you can create your own creatures inside of this program and then as PNGs, and then layer them on top of everything else. And that's really what we did with that fairy. Remember how it had that white background? That was a, a, a solid background image that we converted into a transparent PNG. All right, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, I hope we get to see each other soon. Uh, I'm Ivan Nolinghouse. Thanks so much for watching.